Hello everyone. I am Anup Patel. I'm from Antenna Microsystems. So this talk is about uh, AI support in KVM S5. Um, so the talk is divided into three parts. Uh, first, we'll start with an overview of AI specification. And then um, next, we'll look at the design and uh, features of the AI support in KVM S5. And lastly, we'll look at the current software status uh, in this context, and we'll also have a short demo. Uh, so let's begin with the uh, overview of AI specification. Uh, so AI stands for Advanced Interrupt Architecture. Uh, it's a new spec that's being worked on in this by international since the past two years now. Um, so it supports lo lots of features, like, of course, it addresses all the limitations of uh, RISC-V Click, which is present in existing RISC-V platforms. Um, it supports, uh, it's scalable for a large number of parts, um, but it also defines functionality as uh, optional modular components. Um, the most important thing is it supports MSIs, and the IPIs are also supported as software injected MSIs, and it also supports MSI virtualization and IPI virtualization as well. Um, so the, currently the specification is in so-called uh, stable state as far as fine international. Uh, it will be frozen by Verify Summit, which is coming this December 2022. And the link over here shows uh, is pointing to the latest specification. And we have three uh, optional modular components uh, defined by this specification. Uh, first is the extended local interrupts. Uh, we call it AI CSRs. And then we have uh, incoming message uh, signal interrupt controller. Uh, we call it IMSIC. And then we have advanced pla platform level interpreter or APLIC as we call it. I will look at all of these things in coming slides. So first, uh, look at the extend, extended local interrupts. So this feature is defined as two different ISA extensions called SMAI and SAI. So SMAI deals with the new AI CSRs for M mode uh, and SSAI extension deals with the new CSRs called HS or S mode actually, or in fact, VS mode as well. Um, so uh, with AI external local interrupts, we have to, uh, 64 local interrupts for both RV32 as well as RV64. And each of these uh, local interrupts but now have a configurable priority, uh, which was not there before, of course. And then... Uh, the, uh, we also have something called as uh, local uh, interfiltering. By that, a higher privilege mode can take an interrupt, then selectively inject that interrupt to a lower privilege mode. Uh, and this is available for both M mode to S mode uh, filtering as well as HS mode to VS mode filtering. And the CSRs which are added by these extended local interrupts are largely back up. In fact, they are totally backward compatible with uh, the existing local interrupt mechanism defined by the RIF5 privilege specification. So, uh, which means that um, the existing software will not uh, work totally uh, uh, out of box uh, uh, without uh, AI support as well. Uh, but yeah, of course, to use the uh, AI support, we'll need to extend it. So moving to the MSI part of the AI. Yeah, so, so MSIs are supported using uh, IMSIC or incoming message uh, signal interrupt controller. And um, we have one IMSIC instance next to the each hard, uh, which means that there is no actual limit on the maximum number of hards supported by IMSICs actually. It will naturally scale with the uh, number of hards. And then each IMSIC instance will further have multiple intro files. Um, you know, we have one M mode file, we have one S file, and then we have multiple guest files or VS files up to GEI LEN uh, uh, VS files will be supported. And then uh, each interrupt file also consumes like 4 KB of physical address space where they are mapped. And so this physical address space typically has one MMI or register where the devices or other hearts can write for injecting MSIs. And the entire interrupt file configuration uh, is totally done via AI CSRs. And um, each IMSIC file can support up to 2047 interrupt identities or MSI IDs, I would say. And so MSI and IPI virtualization are both supported through VS files of each heart. Uh, of course, heart also need to have a H extension. Um, so this figure shows a pictorial representation of what I just said. Uh, as you can see, we have a separate IMSIC instance next to each heart. And then we have different devices, platform or PCI devices, which can directly write the MSIs to the different files. Uh, but another interesting thing about this figure is, and that uh, we have a convention over here, is that uh, the solid arrows are like actual hardware lines or signals. And then the dotted arrows are like MSI writes. And we'll follow this convention in coming slides as well. 
So uh, this is uh, this figure largely shows how uh, IMSEC work, uh, work, works uh, uh, on, a, on a MSI only system. So next is how we support IPIs using IMSEC. So like I said, uh, IPIs are supported as software injected MSIs. So by that, it means that uh, a particular heart can directly write to the IMSIC file, a file of a IMSIC uh, to of other heart actually directly. For example, the M mode firmware, if it wants to inject uh, IPI to another heart, it will directly write to the M file of that uh, other heart actually. Same applies to uh, host OS or a hypervisor and also applies to the guest operating system as well. So for guest operation, the guest operation VC2 can directly write to the VS file of other heart. And you see, because of this uh, so supporting IPIs as a uh, software injected MIS, we naturally support um, IPI virtualization as well. Um, and so moving on. So moving on to the wired interrupts, uh, we support this using APLIC in AI. Uh, so with APLIC, we have multiple APLIC domains which are hierarchical in nature. All the wired interrupts uh, are actually connected to the root domain, uh, root APLIC domain. And each APLIC domain targets a particular privilege level uh, associated with a set of cards, of course. And then, uh, and, and of course, an APLIC domain can also delegate interrupts to the child APLIC domain since these are hierarchical. Uh, complete configuration of the APLIC domains is done through memory map registers. Um, in addition, we have line sensing, configurable line sensing, priority, and target heart for each interrupt source. Uh, one APLIC domain can support up to 1023 interrupt sources and it can support target up to 16384 hearts actually. Uh, the most notable thing about APLIC is that uh, we have two operating modes. Uh, one is a direct mode and a MSI mode. So in direct mode, APLIC will directly inject uh, interrupts to the hearts without anything in between. And in MSI mode, uh, uh, the interrupts are forwarded as MSI. So APLIC will take inter wired interrupts and it will convert them uh, using a state machine into MSI writes uh, to targeting some of the hearts actually. So, and the uh, amount of memory space consumed, uh, the physical addresses are consumed by each of these modes. So direct mode consumes, so each APLIC domain in direct mode will consume up from 16 KB to somewhere around uh, 528 KB. And um, each APLIC domain uh, in MSI mode will just com consume a flat 16 KB of uh, physical address space. Yeah. So this figure shows a pictorial representation of APLIC in direct mode. Uh, as we can see, all the wired interrupts are landing into the uh, root domain, which is typically targeting a mode uh, interrupts of different hearts. And then the root domain can selectively delegate some of the interrupts to the S mode domain. Um, and then the S mode domain will target S mode external interrupts of the different hearts, actually. And yeah, one more thing is that, so this uh, figure also is aligned with low end systems where there will not be MS, uh, MSI. So in case of low end systems, you can just use only APLIC part of the AI specification. So moving on to wired interrupts as uh, using APLIC MSI mode actually. So um, uh, this, this, this uh, figure actually resembles more real world situation where we'll have a mix of wired interrupts as well as MSI interrupts in the same system. So where all these wired interrupts will again land to the, the APLIC root domain, M mode domain, and then we will further delegate to S mode domain, and then both S mode and M mode domain will further convert these wired interrupts into um, as MSI writes targeting some of the IMSIC files of any of the CPUs. And we can also have different platform devices and PCI devices we are capable of generating MSIs and they will directly inject MSI by, uh, to the different IMSIC files. Yeah, so this is like very uh, close to real world use, many of the real world use cases. So regarding the AI virtualized support in these different components, um, uh, so the CSR for the AI CSRs, we have separate VS mode CSRs for each for guest or VM. And then the local inter priorities for the VS mode are virtualized using the HVI CTL, HVI priority, and HVI priority CSRs. Uh, IMSIC virtualization, we already spoke in the length. We have various, multiple guest files or VS files for each heart, which uh, guest will use. Um, um, uh, uh, each guest VCU will be assigned one VS file and the G stage of the guest VM or guest or VM will be having a mapping for that uh, for that VS file. And we'll also have to select that uh, VS file using H status VGI and bits when the vCPU runs. And the most notable and important thing is that there'll be no traps when a guest vCPU uses a VS file. 
And in addition to this thing, uh, a hypervisor can uh, inject immunity to IRQs by writing to MMI or registers of the VS file assigned to the guest CPU. Or uh, hypervisor can also route a forward device MSIs uh, direct uh, to the MMI or register of the VS file using some kind of an IMMU. Uh, of course, uh, uh, important information here is that we also have an IMMU spec in flight, which should be uh, again uh, be available sometime next year. Uh, and then in addition, Hyper can also take interrupt, which are meant for VS file and take it itself uh, to do appropriate processing uh, using HGI CSR. And um, lastly, on the APLIC front, uh, APLIC only supports virtual hand partially. The thing is that APLIC, all the MMI registers are typically trap and emulated by a hypervisor, but particularly in MSI mode, uh, there will be no MMI traps uh, at the runtime. The only traps will be there at the boot time. That's, because uh, um, only for configuration, it will require the MMR drives. But in direct mode, there will be MMR drives at time of handling interrupts as well uh, at runtime. So moving to the second part of the talk, uh, that's um, details about the AI support in KVM RISC-V. Um, so we have two parts of uh, the AI support in KVM RISC-V. First is how we virtualize the CSRs, AI CSRs. And the next part is how we deal with the, the IRQ chip or the IMSIC and APLIC virtualization. We call it AI internal IRQ chip. Uh, so the CSR virtualization is always available when the underlying host has the CSRs or the SSAI extension. So it, it can't be turned off kind of thing. And uh, which means that KVM hypervisor will always virtualize the CSRs when they are available in the host and it will always save restore these CSRs. Um, so KVM user space can access this uh, uh, guest vCPU AI state uh, using one dredge adapters. And um, for the AI internal IoT chip, it consists of two parts. Uh, one is an optional APLIC with MSI delivery mode only. And then we have one IMSIC file for each guest vCPU. So intentionally APLIC uh, is optional because um, uh, KVM user space might choose to implement, uh, implement uh, or emulate it in totally in user space as well. So that's totally allowed. And the, the whole AI internal IRQ chip feature of KVM this file is as such as a whole optional as well. So uh, KVM user space can choose to only use the AI CSR virtualization part of the AI support and emulate the entire uh, IRQ chip in user space itself. That's up, totally up to the KVM user space. So more on the KVM internal IRQ uh, chip, uh, at any point in time, a guest vCPU might be either uh, using a software file or it might be using a VS, hardware VS file. So software file means that it will uh, actually be trap and emulated by software in hypervisor and VS file means it will be virtualized by hardware. Um, so uh, the insect VS file assigned to a guest vCPU must be updated when the hard underlying heart is, which means that if a vCPU is moved from one heart to another heart, we need to of course change the VS file uh, assigned to that vCPU and use a VS file from the new heart itself. So this is an interesting and a challenging part as well for AI support in KVM. We will look into details in coming slides. Uh, apart from this, in general, the KVM AI, AI RP chip has three operating modes. Um, first is an emulation, uh, emulation mode uh, where all the uh, IMSIC files are always software files, which means the, all the IMSIC files are always trap and emulated. And then we have a hardware acceleration mode where uh, all the uh, IMSIC files are always VS files, uh, which means that uh, KVM hypervisor will always try to use hardware isolation for the guest vCPUs. And then, of course, the hardware isolation mode will only work if the underlying host has hardware VS files available. If it's not available, we can't use the hardware isolation mode of internal IRP chip. And the last and the most important mode is auto mode or automatic mode, where, where the KVM hypervisor will dynamically switch between VS files and software. Uh, and the uh, software files based on availability of VS file in the underlying host CPU. And uh, in other words, this mode is all about dynamically switching between trap and emulated mode and uh, 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 software emulated uh, uh, mode actually. Uh, again, this mode is only available for uh, when underlying host uh, uh, has actual hardware via VS files. Um, and the most important uh, part about this mode is that it allows creating, uh, running more vCPUs compared to the actual number of VS files available on the heart actually, which is greater than GEI island. Yeah. So basically it makes the thing whole scalable and dynamic, uh, the selection of VS files. 
So setting up an uh, internal IRP chip in from KVM user space is a three-step process. First, we uh, KVM user space will create a EI device file using KVM create device IFL. And then it will call, do a bunch of configuration. It will set some of the configuration parameters of the AI internal IRP chip. Uh, the, the, the mandatory ones are uh, setting the number of interp identities or MSI identities. Uh, setting the heart index bits of the MSI base addresses and then also setting the individual base addresses of each vCPU. So apart from these, if uh, KVM user space wants to use the APLIC support in kernel, uh, it can also set the number of interrupt sources and also set the APLIC base address. So once this all configuration is done, uh, the third step is to, uh, for KVM user space to finalize this thing and do a, something called as control in it. And once the control unit is done, we can't change the configuration, uh, which we just did in the step two. And, and, and KVM hypervisor will only emulate uh, or virtualize the KIR chip after the control unit has been done. So without doing the control unit, the KVM IR chip will not function. So accessing KVM internal IRQ chip from user space uh, after it's the unit is done is very straightforward. To just inject uh, emulator IRQs, we have two IOPTLs, uh, KVM IRQ line and KVM signal MSI IOPTLs. And to access the APLIC registers, uh, we simply use the get set device attribute IOPTLs. Same applies to even MC registers. Uh, we use the same get set uh, device att um, attribute IOPTLs. And um, uh, just uh, we can actually save, restore APLIC and MC context using these two, uh, these two IOPTLs actually at runtime. So moving to virtual IPIs uh, using MSIC VS files. Uh, so as I already said, uh, to inject IPIs, a guest vCPU can directly write to the VS file of other target vCPU. So this figure actually shows how a vCPU A running on hard zero directly injects an IPI to some other vCPU of the same VM running on some other hard X. So a vCPU A will typically do a MMIO write using a guest virtual address, which will be translated using two stage translation. Uh, uh, and the MMIO write will land to the VS file being used by the vCPU B. And uh, the VS file will further uh, inject uh, a signal uh, to the uh, heart X CSRs. And then heart CSRs will further in inject. Uh, interrupt to the software. Uh, so, which means that vCPU B will take an interrupt whenever it starts running or whenever it runs actually. So, as we can see, there is no traps involved uh, for injecting an IPI from vCPU A to vCPU B. It's totally trapless. So, uh, this is how the IPI virtualization works with uh, AI MSIC file, VS files. So looking at emulated IOPs, this, this is another very common case. Uh, typically, real-world VMs will have a lot of emulated devices uh, in user space or in kernel space. So, so this figure actually shows how KVM user space can inject an uh, um, emulated IRQ using IOPTL. So typically, uh, KVM user space on some hard zero will uh, do a KVM IOPTL. It could be IRQ line signal or MS signal MSI IOPTL. So KVM uh, hypervisor in the HS mode will take the IOPTL and convert that into an MMIO write. The MMIO write will eventually land to the VS file associated with the target VCP, which is supposed to take the interrupt. Uh, the VS file will, do a, will signal the interrupt uh, to the hard CSRs and the hard CSRs will further inject an interrupt to the, um, the VCP whenever it runs. Okay. So again, this process, as you can see, um, there is no extra trap taken on the hard which is running VCP, right? So there is only an IOPTL involved, which is anyways involved in any other architecture as well. So other very important use case is uh, routing device MSIs uh, directly to the guest or VM. Um, let's say we have a system with uh, some IMMU uh, or rather the RISC-V MMU, uh, which is being defined. So in this case, um, uh, as we can see in this figure, actually we might have a platform or PCI device, which is directly assigned to a VM and that will generate MSI right based on a guest physical address GPA. And then the IMMU G stage will actually translate this MSI write into a host physical address MSI write. And then the MSI write will eventually land the VS file and the same story VS file will again inject interrupt, uh, signal and interrupt to the hard CSRs. Uh, and uh, whenever the vCPU, the receiving target VCPU runs, it will take the interrupt immediately. As, and over here as well, like there are no extra interrupts uh, or traps taken by the hypervisor to mediate this whole process. The MSI is directly injected to the guest or VM. Right, so, 
So all these virtualized, virtualized features of AI support are fine. But another interesting aspect is that a vCPU having, uh, who is directly taking uh, device interrupts or taking directly IPIs from other vCPU using VS files might sleep as well when there is no work, of course. Uh, so when a vCPU sleeps using something called as WFI traps, uh, what what happens is that kvm hypervisor will actually reroute the vs file interrupts to itself um, and and when the actual interrupt happens while the vcp is sleeping the hypervisor or kvm hypervisor will actually wake up the vcp and resume it so that it can process the interrupts so this is very important aspect to have a seamless uh, interrupt virtualization um, behavior in, in case of uh, ai so moving to the the most challenging part that we faced in AI support in KVM is um, how do we move the VS files? So like I said, VS files are per hard or per CPU. So whenever a vCPU moves from one hard to another, we have to change uh, the uh, VS file assigned to the vCPU, of course, uh, which means that uh, let's say it moves from hard A to hard B, then we have to pick a VS file from the INSEC associated with the hard B. So this is a bit complicated process in case of AI virtualization, and uh, and we uh, for KVM we have to do these things in the run loop itself, and run loop is really, really performance sensitive area. So so as this uh, flow over here in this figure shows, the 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 uh, process of updating the INSEC file of a vCPU in the run loop is actually uh, divided into a fast path and a slow path. So most of the time uh, we'll be doing fast path where there, we won't have much overhead. Uh, updating the MSEC file every time we are in the learn loop. But sometimes we'll have we'll have to go to the slow path, particularly when the uh, vCPU changes the underlying host. And in the slow path further, you can see there are two parts. One is the red boxes and yellow boxes. So yellow boxes are particularly the path when we are, uh, after moving to a new heart, uh, the vCPU is able to get, uh, acquire a new VS file. And the yellow boxes show the flow of moving to the new VS file from the old file and doing the state as well. When the red boxes show the case where after moving to the new heart, uh, the vCPU is not able to get a, acquire a VS file. So in this case, uh, what we do is like, uh, we end up falling back to that trap and emulated mode. And if there were there were some devices assigned to it who are injecting MLS directly, then in that case, we'll also have to map the MMU to use something called as uh, memory resident inter files, which is a feature of IMU being developed. Uh, so so as, as you can see, like uh, all the cases are covered. It's just that most of the time uh, we'll, we'll like to spend uh, uh, in the fast path itself for performance reasons, of course. And to get most performance, uh, we would encourage that vCPUs don't move around the hub, host CPUs or host hearts, uh, change the hearts frequently actually. So moving to the last part of the talk, um, there's a software status and demo actually. So the complete proof of concept implementation has been done on QMU, OpenSBI, Linux, KVM, and KVM2. Um, and we are supporting both device tree as well as ACPI for this. And um, the, all the device tree binding and ACPI discussion has already happened on this five international mailing list and, and, and the community meetings. Uh, we still need to send out the patches to the Linux mailing list. Uh, we also need to send out the ACPI ECRs for the AI to KVM forum, uh, no, the UEFI forum, sorry. And um, all the upstreaming for QM and OpenSVI has been already done. Uh, the only pending work uh, for upstreaming is Linux KVM and KVM tool. Uh, and the links over here point to the patches and the branches which contain these patches actually. Uh, so uh, we, we are in a very good shape as far as software goes uh, for the AI. Uh, and uh, we hope to send out the patches very soon for KVM and uh, Linux. Uh, now it's a time for a short demo uh, where I'll, well, I'll sh show you um, where I'll show you the VM running. Uh, just a minute. So over here, what we will do is actually, uh, we will uh, try different cases uh, with AI. So first we'll try the vanilla case. As you can see, there is no AI being specified in the QMO command line over here. Okay, and when we run this thing, actually uh, we will see that uh, KVM will not use AI virtualization. Okay, so, 
there is no AI in the host in any form. Okay, we can see that by get browse CPU info and get. Okay, and now if we just launch the VM, uh, it will simply launch without uh, AI support, and the entire um, IRP chip will be emulated in software by KVM user space that is KVM tool over here. So, as you can see, it's booting the VM with two covers and it's using click actually. You can see it's using click because there is no AI support, of course. And yeah, so it's up, right? So, so, um, so let, let's, let's look at another demo, actually. This, this is the standard thing we have right now. So let's say we just want to have an AI interrupt controllers now in the word machine, but without VS files, okay? So what will happen if we don't give any VS files? So as you can see, to enable the AI in QMO, we just say AI equal to aplic in sick uh, as additional parameter to the word machine name. And it will start, uh, it will create a, Post, it will create a machine with the IMSIC support and AI support. So we can see that we have IMSIC enabled. So on the host, so host is now using IMSIC and it's also using IPIs for the IMSIC. And we can also see that there is also an APLIC. Uh, so, so an APLIC is routing uh, interrupts as MSIs and this is what it has printed actually. And uh, we can also see that the AI CSRs are, also, uh, are also there from cat proc CPU info. So you can see that both M mode and S mode CSRs are present on all the CPUs. So now if we create the VM with the same set of binaries, it will detect that there is AI support in the kernel. It's, it's usable as well. And the, uh, and it will uh, use the in-kernel IRQ chips uh, and, uh, and KVM CSR was virtualization as well, AI virtualization. It's running the same kernel inside the VM as well. And as you can see, now the VM is using IMSIC instead of uh, uh, PLIC. And it is still using IPIs using SBI because it also detected, uh, the KVM user also detected that the hardware acceleration is not there, which means that auto and hardware acceleration modes are not there. So it, it hinted the guest OS that don't use IPIs for, uh, with IMSIC. So it's using, uh, falling back to IPIs. Basically in this case, since there are no VS files, this entire IMSIC is trapped and emulated by software. And same applies to APLIC as well. So APLIC is also trapped and emulated to software. And as you can see, it booted fine, right? So, so you can see that. Okay. And uh, even the user space reports that it has S mode CSRs. So now let's look at a more full fledged demo where we have VS files as well. So the only difference compared to previous is we have APLIC and IMSIC in the work machine, as well as we also have seven guest files on each hard VS files. So if we run this thing, as usual, the host does not see much difference. It will continue to use IMSIC as files, right? Uh, and it also use IPIs for that. And it will also have APLIC as usual, right? And same, no change in the proc CPU info. We have both the CSRs available. And then let's try to launch VM. And now if we launch a VM, we will see some interesting stuff. Because now uh, there is hardware isolation available um, in the underlying host because we have VS files. So KVM user space will detect this fact that auto mode and hardware isolation mode are supported and it will try to prefer auto mode. And you will see that uh, even the IMSIC VS files will, uh, we, will be like now hardware virtualized rather than being trapped and emulated. And this is evident from the fact that now IMSIC tries to use uh, IPIs within the VM itself using the VS file directly because uh, that's what KVM tool hinted it to do. And, and same thing, and the APLIC is still trap and emulated, but yeah, it's in MSI mode, so there is no traps at runtime for APLIC actually. Where is it? Yeah, it's here, yeah. So, and you can see that we have, again, AI support in both, right? And So that, 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 yeah, 
So yeah, this is like full uh, blown virtualization using AI running on entirely on QMU. Uh, it is using all the features of AI and all the virtualization features as well, right? So yeah. Uh, this is pretty much it about the demo. Um, let's move back to the slides. So we're done with the demo. Um, uh, I hope uh, this was like an interesting thing for all of you. And um, so thank you for spending time attending this session. Please enjoy the rest of the KVM forum. Thank you. <laughs>